previous lesson, we started discussing named ranges. And I briefly showed you what a named range is. So now it's time to create some named ranges in our worksheet. And then in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use them in formulas. So we're working with our profits for Q1 table over here. And you can see that this table is made up of three columns. We have company, revenue and profit. Now, maybe I want to name this range of cells company, this range of cells revenue and this range of cells profit. So let's take a look at the different methods. Now, probably the simplest method is to simply use the name box. What I could do here is select this range of cells, go up to the name box and click in it, and then just type what I want to call this range of cells. So I'm going to call this company. Now it's worth noting that when you are naming ranges, you can't have any spaces in the name. So if I wanted to call this company name, I would either need to separate the two words with an underscore, or I would need to make them all one word like that. Now I'm not going to have company name, I'm just going to have company, but we must also remember to hit enter to get that name to set. And then when we click the drop down, we can see that there is the named range. If I'm clicked elsewhere on the worksheet and I quickly want to jump back to this range of cells, I can click the drop down and select company and it's going to move me to that area. So named ranges are really good for navigation as well. So that's the first method to create a named range. We can simply use the name box. Now, the next way that we can do this is we can select the range that we want to name, go up to the formulas tab and notice we have a defined names group in the middle. So what I can do here is click on define name. And if you cast your eyes down to the bottom where it says refers to, it's picked up the cell range that I've selected. So now all I need to do is give this a name. But again, it's picked up that I have the word revenue above and I might want to use that. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course and gain access to over 200 courses ad free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So in this case, that is true. If it wasn't, I could simply overtype with a new name. Let's click on OK and check the name box to make sure it's there which it is. Now, in both of those examples, I've just selected the actual data. I haven't selected the header when I've been naming my ranges. Now, the third method includes the header. So we need to select the header and all of the data. We can go up to the formulas tab and we can choose create from selection. Because what this will do is it will recognize that we have a header and it's going to say, do you want us to create the name for this range based on the information in the top row? So if I want to name this range profit and I have profit in the top row, I can simply click on OK and it's going to create that named range called profit. Now, there is another way that we can do this. And this time we're going to select the entire data set just here and we're going to go to the name manager button. Now, the name manager serves as a few different purposes. We can come in here to take a look at all of the named ranges we've set up, or we can create a new range from here by clicking the new button. So I'm going to call this all underscore data and click on OK. Now, whilst we're in here, it's worth noting that this is where we come if we want to make any changes to our named ranges. So if I want to change the cell range that these refer to, I can click on the named range, click the edit button, and then I could change the cell range that this is pointing to. I can also delete named ranges from here as well. So if I don't need them anymore, I have a delete button. So now I have four new named ranges in this drop down list. And as I mentioned, we can use them for quick and easy navigation. But the best way to use these is when you're working with formulas. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lesson. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources.
To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.